Hi, I'm Paul. I'm 20 years old and for the past three to four years I've been struggling with addiction to prescription painkillers. So growing up my whole dream was just to go in the army, like I'd always play army and I'd look up on the computers how to join and what to do. But when I was like 14 I started just getting these pains in my hips and obviously in the long term that stopped me joining the army. So when I was 15 my doctor prescribed me codeine to help manage with my hip pains. When I first got the painkiller, the codeine, I took one tiny little tablet and I thought, nah, didn't do anything. So then I took like more tablets and that's when I got this like, like this warm rush. It's like a hot bath, but on the inside. I didn't know anything about addiction. I didn't think I could get addicted to these little things. If you see them, they're tiny. You think, how can you get addicted to that? And I can stop when I want to. Ever since that day, it was really it was like, right, it's on from now. I'm going to feel like this as much as I can, as, as often as I can. I don't care what anyone tells me, this is it. This makes me feel alive, this makes me feel human. Obviously I was taking more than what I was prescribed to take. But the reason I never thought I had a problem was because I was getting prescribed it from the doctor. And I also have a reason to take it, because obviously my hip. I think the main reason I got into getting high all the time on these prescription pills is because it just made me forget everything. Everything that's happened, all the bullying, my friends dying from cancer, my granddad dying from cancer and that all kind of happened in the same year. And it's like everything just came crashing down at once. And it, that's when I took that first dose and I felt that euphoria, that escape, that was the first time I felt normal. And that's how I got so deep involved into just getting high as much as I could. So the turning point for me was after I was taking all this coding, the coding stopped being enough and it wasn't doing anything to me. So I wanted the next highest thing. And when that wears off, you're in hell. Like, you can't think, you can't eat, you can't sleep. You're hot one minute, then you're freezing cold, then your bones are on fire, but your skin's cold. And you're sweating constantly, you're vomiting, you're having diarrhea. For a long time, people offered help, and I refused it. It's like, I don't need help, or I didn't even want it. I was on a war path, not like a war path, but just a suicide path of like, just not caring if I lived or died, if I took these drugs or not. And it's when I went to my mate's house, and he saw how red my eyes were, how dark the skin, the bags around my eyes were, and just saw me in a state. And he was like, you need to get off this. You, you can't be on this anymore, it's gonna kill you. And I was, I was just defensive. I was like, oh, what do you know, what do you know? And I just really snapped at him. And it was after that, I was like, I just felt horrible. And it was like, I just put the bottle down after I finished it for that last time. But this just shows how powerful like addiction actually is. Like hearing your mum and your friends say that if you don't stop, you're gonna die. And I don't wanna come back to a corpse. I feel like I'm gonna come back and see my son dead on the floor. And it doesn't stop you. You just think, oh, what do they know? It, it changes your morals. So I started watching YouTube videos on miracle ways to kill the withdrawal. And there's no way to kill it. You just have to go through that hell to get off of it. And finally, I got referred to We Are With You. That's when I started talking to Joe, the person I talked to on the phone. And ever since then, just keep me in, like, she saved my life, put it that way, yeah. Having the support, like, helps more than you think. Like, I thought no one can help me, I thought I was in, no one was able to be able to me at all. But when I was off it for a month and I was feeling good, I started saying, oh, I don't really need these calls anymore. And that's when you start thinking you're safe. You can start dabbling around with this week of pills again. And that's what I started doing. And then I got to a point where I was back in the same circle with the coding. And Joe, my support worker, always said, if anything happens, I can always ring her. So I got back in touch. And that's where Joe got me into like going to Narcotic Anonymous meetings, which uh, you start learning more about what an addiction is. Like I got told you don't, you can't control your addiction, but you're in control of the recovery. I'm not gonna lie and say I'm clean, I'm healthy, and it's been amazing, because I'm not. But I'm a lot better than I was a month ago. I get prescribed a weekly prescription now, instead of getting loads of boxes at a, at a time. That's something what me and Joe talked about. And um, it's gone from taking all of them at once to taking eight a day or less, which is in the recommended amount, because I've still got to take the thing what I'm addicted to and the thing what can destroy my life and has destroyed it for the past few years 
is the thing that helps with my hip. So having these support groups and support workers I can talk to on a regular basis as much as I want to, it just helps keep you online, to keep on track. And it's helped me reduce it and cut it down to where it's a lot more safe for me and just everyone else involved. For all the stuff that's happened with the addictions and the codeine, the morphine, I've always been making music and that's always just kept that just a bit more of a healthy balance in my brain of just keeping just keeping going and able to express my problems out loud and that's pretty much my whole life at this point <laughs> i love it